Hi guys. Hi everybody. Uh, it's Philip Rujin. Right now I'm in Krasnodar Krai near Black Sea. Uh, and today with me is Mike Ferreira, also known as the founder of uh, the group Ancient Miner Earth. Is it correct, Mike? Yep. Hi, Philip. How are you? How are you today? Yeah, pretty much fine. Just returned from the beach. And, uh, yeah, was a little bit too hot, but then the wind came, so pretty chilling weather today in Krasnodar. Okay, what about you? Uh, well, we've been kind of hot here lately. It's been the hottest part of our summer so far, but actually we've been having, I would say, the coldest summer in history. Uh, we had the, the hottest one, so wow. uh, record-breaking. I don't know what's happening, actually. Too many floods. I mean, floods everywhere in Europe. Uh, you, you probably heard about Germany and Belgium floods, like when whole towns were totally devastated the same where i'm right right now two weeks ago there was a hugest flood here wow and everything is flooded they just been pumping for two weeks just to get rid of those all those swamps and water ditches which is filled like with water and all this anti-sanitar uh, disease control measures were taken so all the seashore is closed nobody's swimming i had to go like 30 miles away from this town to to get some clean water to swim i mean it's wow crazy yeah people are just going home because nobody has this opportunity to, to ride a car i mean just people ret go to, with the planes and just you know visit the, the city the exact city they want to do their vacation at and when it's like everything is closed you cannot go like 30 miles away or something it's very expensive for many people so they just go home and so wow. yeah just i mean the whole season is broken people are totally devastated all the businesses are just you know having bad 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 seasons i would say because this is season based economy when people just go somewhere and spend money in summer and then they, nothing else happens for for the rest of the year so yeah that's bad there's a lot of a lot of craziness in the world today it's it's like anything that can be bad is trying to be bad yeah, and I wanted to start with uh, recent events because I, I wanted to talk about it, actually, um, because it's related to mining, actually. And so I, I'll just screen share. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, you probably can see. Can you see my screen? Uh, no. 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 What about now? Uh, not really, eh? No. Let's see. What about now? Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay, okay, Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Areas of interest for me. Yeah, we're seeing, we're seeing, we're seeing, we're having, we're having some audio, audio problems. I'm like, I'm like, myself. myself. Twice, twice. <laughs> yeah, I see, maybe, I see. I... Maybe uh, that's because I, uh, let's see, remove and do it again. Uh, stop screen, share screen. Without no audio, it'd probably be better. What about now? Yeah, I, I see that. Oh yeah, we're we're sounding better now. Okay, so um, people just don't understand that everything is related to mining, and uh, Afghanistan has a huge mining uh, resource-based mm -hmm. economy in potential to be built, and that's why so many interest to mm -hmm. Afghanistan. Um, I have like uh, also this uh, guy. Uh, that's just a YouTube. Uh, sc Let's see that that, that that map. Okay, as you can see, oil. This is oil. It's on the north, and gas also here. So like uh, the the amount of oil and gas is equal to neighboring countries like uh, Turkmenistan, which is like fourth or fifth 
country <coughs> in Asia in exporting the gas. So just imagine how many gas they have and oil. So just a huge, huge uh, potential there. Uh, also lithium. Lithium. It's it's uh, this is lithium. Four places of lithium. It's incredible because lithium is a it's it's compared to oil of a new era because it it's it needed in batteries and everything so it's yeah like it can yeah also uh let's return to uh that that map uh this is like huge iron ore 33 mile well not 33 mile 32 kilometers uh, <coughs> uh, 32 kilometers uh long that 60% ore of iron just just imagine yeah that's a lot that's and it can can be can be uh, even mined in in open method like you can even like dig it <laughs> you can dig it without any shafts or anything like I mean, like an open pit mine open open pit mining yeah just yeah. imagine uh, also um, see my thoughts on those philip is uh what that probably what that is is a uh is a backfill of mining waste. Iron uh, is a uh, uh, native iron is is extremely rare in the world. There's only like one place I think in Russia somewhere that you can actually uh, get native iron. Iron ore that we mine today and open pit mines usually is. Uh, is the waste products from the ancient mining and the smelting of of uh, of, uh, of iron to make to make steel and stuff and so they would take the quarries and they would backfill them with waste from that process and that is what we mine today yeah of course I mean but the amount of uh, potential mining areas is just incredible yeah I'm sure it is uh, they have gold they have uh everything i mean look at maybe the that's map. why there's so much interest over there yeah yeah I, that's what i'm trying to say just just a whole bunch of areas just everybody just check it by yourself they say it's like uh, around um four or five trillion dollars worth hmm. and uh you know you know how much money uh, U.S. actually spent on Afghanistan? I don't know, but it's uh, a lot of money. That's Probably trillions. Money. <laughs> Probably trillions. A couple of yeah, just about the same. So, and they yeah. didn't get they didn't get any mining control system there. They just returned and withdrawn the troops. I mean. It's all madness. It's it's yeah. crazy. It's 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 uh, it's New World Order theater. It's just all a big game. They shuffle yeah. pieces around. They kill people here and there. They it's just to keep us all stressed out and worried about other things instead of the things we should be worried about, like what's going on with COVID and the vaccines and all that craziness. Uh, it's, it's insane. Yeah. So, big topic today is your research on uh, piezoelectric, uh, I would say, evidence, because, you know, I accept it as an evidence, because, you know, you are kind of an expert right now, so, I mean... I don't know you, about you, that. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, why not? Because we, we all, like, you know, research some certain areas, and then we can share our opinion. Yeah. And points of views. So, I mean, this is not 100% correct, maybe, but all we have right now is this opportunity to share this information that you get. I mean, yeah, we can only explore and try to figure out what the right answers are. It's, uh, it's not easy. Because, I mean, we only have limited access to things, so it's not like we can jump in a, in a ship and go up to the top of the sky and see what's there and stuff. So we can only do what we can do uh yeah would be nice if you screen share uh, that oh yeah that's good i see it all right let's see you, you got my uh you got my pictures up there yeah yeah hey can you go let's see can you go back to to me so i can show you guys something uh 
see we how see we see we see everything you do on your oh so you oh so you can see me too what i'm yep. doing yeah i got a piece of quartz here uh mm -hmm. put a little okay. closer to the to the camera uh Quartz is a very interesting thing because if you if you squeeze quartz, if you compress it with you know with pressure, like you know either mechanically or with you know even with your fingers, pressing quartz creates electricity. That's isn't that, isn't that used in watches and watch production? Yeah, well, uh, quartz. Well, like a quartz watch, everybody's probably heard of a quartz watch. Those were yeah. Yeah. pretty famous and popular back in the day uh, the quartz doesn't actually power the watch the quartz uh keeps the time and uh, well let, let me go back a little bit like i said when you you when you squeeze quartz it creates uh, electricity that runs along the sides positive and negative and so uh, any, any any pressure on that quartz creates electricity right yes okay the more you squeeze, the more the more electricity you get. You know, I'm probably not generating very much just by squeezing this thing. Okay. But uh, but if you run electricity through quartz, quartz vibrates, and that is what quartz does in a quartz watch. The battery that you put in a quartz watch uh, sends electricity through the piece of quartz, causing the quartz to vibrate. And uh, they they uh, they get it. They cut the quartz in, in a way such that it, it vibrates at thirty two thousand seven hundred and sixty eight pulses per minute, or is it second? I forget. It's one of those two. Uh, maybe it's a second. And uh, and then that's how they keep the time so accurately. Because the quartz vibrates in such a perfect fashion and that number 32768 lines right up with one second and then they're able with the mechanical gears and things inside the watch that's how it keeps perfect time um so i've been working on this idea that the that the world is is a piezo electric system and when you think about how the stars and everything just keep perfect time, right? The days are perfect. The numbers are perfect. Everything's the same day after day, sort of, right? It's like the Earth has uh, quartz watch timing. And the reason why it has quartz watch timing is because the Earth is a piezoelectric system. And uh, let me pull this one up here. You know, obviously, a lot of people out there, you know, ran into flat Earth a number of years ago, and a lot of people now believe that the Earth is flat. And so now there's a big dispute on the internet: is you know, is the, is the Earth flat, or is it round? And I've come up with a solution that I think uh, can make everybody happy, where you can have the Earth be both flat and round. And uh, I think what the Earth is: the Earth is a ball. In this ball, there's a flat plane, and that flat plane is the plane um, upon which we live. And uh, <clears throat> uh, obviously, the the people that are that run the world, they love to tell us stuff, and they love to tell us stuff in TV shows like The Simpsons, and they love to tell us stuff in movies, and they love to tell us stuff in art. And this piece here is a painting in the uh, United Nations. In the United Nations, and and if you I look at, no, go ahead. This is Muru from Denver, I think. No. No, this no no no. This one comes from the UN somewhere inside. Oh, ah, okay. okay, okay, okay. And if you kind of look at it, you can see the guy on top. He's got looks like he's got the flat plane in his hand with the with the continents on there, and the other guys kind of lining it all up. And so, to me, they're telling us right there that the Earth was made. That the Earth is not a natural thing that formed in space. The Earth was actually con constructed. And I've come up with this, you know, I brainstormed this for a long time, trying to trying to figure out, well, how can I explain the Earth? And and uh, somewhere along the line, I run into a picture of a submarine and how a submarine works, and I started to think. And so I come up with this idea that that the Earth, you know, we 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 do not sit in space. We we set in water. 
space is water. And the outside shell of the earth, I believe, is a steel shell. The steel is strong. You need something strong. And like a submarine, the water that the earth sets in puts pressure on the steel shell just like a submarine and the deeper the submarine goes the more pressure is, is applied to the shell and the shell is squeezed inwards now if you put the earth if you lowered the earth into the right level of water and created the the appropriate amount of pressure you're going to squeeze that shell and uh, in order to get p piezoelectric energy you need a, a piezoelectric material now there's different kinds of piezoelectric materials um, a few different minerals, uh, bones, even, and, and uh, uh, different kind of a few different kinds of material. But I, I figured quartz was probably the best answer because quartz is one of the most common minerals on the planet. I mean, there's quartz everywhere. Sand is made of quartz. Uh, rocks is, rocks are made of quartz. Uh, there's quartz in just about everything. So. How could I get a steel shell to squeeze a piece of quartz? Well, how about we make a quartz shell? And we put that quartz shell inside of the steel shell. And so when the steel shell is squeezed in, it squeezes the quartz shell, putting the pressure on the shell, creating electricity. Well, I kind of figured, well, all right, that sounds plausible, but maybe we need a layer of water in there between the steel shell and the quartz shell. So water could be either let in or let out to adjust the pressure to make sure that the squeezing of the quartz shell doesn't break the quartz shell. So I figured, I figured there's a layer of water between the steel shell and the quartz shell. And they adjust it uh, to, to get it right. And, and when the water presses on the steel shell, pressing on the water shell, pressing on the quartz shell, you get piezoelectricity. And that is how I think the Earth, where the Earth gets its power from. Now, if you got the flat plane across the middle, um, what might be underneath the bot? What might be underneath this, underneath the ground, in the bottom half of the of the of the uh, sphere? Well, I'm figuring there's a saltwater battery down there, a saltwater battery to store the the piezoelectricity that's created by the the Earth system. Uh, or, excuse me, where where soul batteries exactly? What's that? A soul battery. Where where do you think it is actually? At the bottom, the bottom half of the ball, underneath the ground. Ah, underneath the plane. Yes, right? not underneath okay. the plane. Okay, okay. And I think that the salt water. I, I'm sure I probably talked about this before with you guys. Uh, when uh, when you mine, like if you were to to uh, mine with water, what, what what you get is salty water. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, my, mining water is salty, and uh, that's so that makes sense that you could easily make a salt water battery on the bottom half of the Earth because they're making a lot of salt. And uh, so it accumulates the charge of that piezoelectric, which is done by pressure from outside, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so you can uh, store energy down in there. And uh, let's see. Let's go to this next picture here. All right. After I got that kind of idea kind of going, I'm thinking, okay, now how how could we explain the sky and how the sky uh, uh, rotates because if you, you know if you were to take your camera and, and, and keep your aperture of your camera open and have it taken a picture for 10 minutes and I'm sure you all have seen this in pictures on the internet and stuff the stars will make a circle in the sky they'll all spin around in a circle because the sky is turning so how could we get the sky to turn inside this, this set of uh, spheres Well, if you put piezoelectric actuators on the bottom half of the sphere, or in the middle of the sphere, where you know, like where the ground is at, and then on top of that, you got a glass dome. 
uh, you can make the glass dome revolve in a circle. Let me. Uh, an actuator is the is the is the structure that actually does something that moves. And what happens is, uh, let's see if I can get a better picture here. Oh, uh, here. Oh, yeah. Maybe back up just a second. This, this shows you more of, of what uh, how the piezoelectric things sort of would look like. You can see the positive and negative on the top and the bottom, and that red, yeah. the pinkish red, that would be your piece of quartz. So when you when you compress it, it's going to create electricity that floats. Okay. And, and uh, now, like I said a little bit ago, they lo they love to tell the stuff in movies. And yeah. in, the, in the upper right hand corner, that is the scene from uh, from the Hunger Games. And uh, imagine those uh, uh, shape the the uh, uh, six sided shapes that you see in the sky. Imagine those being quartz. And imagine that is the sky that's made of quartz. It's being squeezed by the ball by the by the you know by the pressure from the steel shell. And that creates electricity that flows along that sphere. Can it explain all these lightning bolts and all this stuff? Like water is superconductor, right? So maybe when it's raining, it's in humidity, all these charges of quartz, piezo charges come down well, to well, I, all this moisture, I mean, conducting. I, uh, I don't know, because... Because you know we do have a water cycle, we do have weather, and I think the weather, um, I guess, it, even though they they can and do, I think, manipulate the weather, but I think the weather kind of operates independently um, from the electricity that runs through the dome. Would be my guess. Because you know we had experiments of all this atmospheric electricity, which is actually working with this level uh, altitude difference. I mean. You yeah. put all these catchers on the top and you collect it on the bottom. I mean, this is, somebody calls it ether harvesting, I don't know, but it's all, we, it's officially known as atmospheric electricity, right? Yeah. So, uh, we use the, uh, this term. So what if that atmospheric electricity is just the visualization or, you know, physical representation of that constant quartz activity from the top to the bottom. I mean, I mean that's how. It's... I mean, you know that electricity has grounding, and if we are the ground, we are grounding all this charge. I mean, electricity has three uh, holes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one 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 of them goes to grounding. I mean, <laughs> what if we are grounding all these charges that you're talking about constantly? I mean eternally because that pressure from outside i mean what is it controlling who is it controlling i mean well we, you mean, we are not controlling it at all from inside right we cannot control it from inside so it's constant to us it's like you know it's like uh having a fresh air i mean we have yeah. it each and every day it's a routine thing well, but we don't mention it because you know we don't see it we cannot harvest it. We don't have all these technologies right now available, and all we yeah. can see is representation of of these lightnings when it's like raining and uh, water conducting it, so we can visualize it. I mean, that's what I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah, I mean, guess. I think it's kind of hard to know what's really going on. You know, if if we're inside of a, a piezoelectric ball, would would electrical energy be flowing through the middle of that ball somehow? Um, I don't know. Seems plausible. I mean, we do from what from what I've read about this stuff. There is allegedly electricity in the in the sky that's measurable. Uh, so does that come from the piezoelectric dome system, or is it something else? I I don't I don't really know. If you have this dome above us, like the sky that you're talking about, right? Yeah. Something may strike from a up there to the bottom to the ground and we see this lightning always goes to the tree or some house or maybe some metal thing yeah. or maybe a, a person which is walking on the ground so it's grounding lightning always grounding and destroying 
the place where it's going to strike. Yeah. It could be related in some form or fashion, or it just could be the, the way that the, the weather and works. The, yeah, and the next thing you want to talk about is Star Wars, is Death Star, right? <laughs> well, like I said, they love to tell us stuff, right? So yeah. if, if Earth has a steel shell around it, gee, what looks like that? Oh, the Death Star. And then a Death Star, of course, got that horizontal line in the middle, and you know, you look at that and go, oh, isn't that great? Isn't that where the flat plane would go? And then, uh, you know, we wonder where does water come from? Well, water comes from the water that's out outside of Earth, and it comes through a portal. And when you know it, the Death Star's got a portal. They say it's a laser, of course, and it, you know, it's a laser, of course, in the movie, but. And I remember the first time I saw that, it never really screamed laser to me. <laughs> so, yeah. of course, it's a movie. So, you know, is 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 the shell of the Earth, does it really look like the, the Death Star? Eh, it could. Wouldn't surprise me. Because they love to tell us stuff. Yeah, by the way, uh, the ancient Russian folk uh, fairy tale, whatever you call it, uh, has that the the death of of the main evil guy who is controlling the world is in in some type of bow of some type of egg structure so you have to break it mm. and and then you find a needle or something and that needle is in, always inside of the of this you know structure and you know you have you seen russian faberge uh you know all this uh, eggs eggs yeah oh yeah eggs. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I think uh, yeah, it's very pl plausible because X uh, have uh, you know this inside pressure and outside pressure. So I mean. Yeah. Not. And if you kind of zoom in on the on the Death Star, there it's almost looked like a bathtub stopper. Doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Once you pull it, yeah, 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 you push it up, water water slides down into that hole. Um, kind of like that. Call it floodgates. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, because you, know, you know, I say, of course, that uh, that the ancient miners were hydraulic miners and they used water. Well, if this water was coming in, uh, let's say halfway up toward the top of the dome, and the water was you know, could be let in in a controlled rate. That is the water that uh, that they used to mine with. The water would flow down either a tube or a channel or along the wall uh, going downward. And that flow of water going downward is what creates the, the pressure to hydraulically mine with. And that water that flowed through there to, to use a hydraulic mop hydraulically mine the earth is what is what the oceans are made of the oceans are the water that they use to hydraulically mine with and all of that water that they use to mine with is also most likely on the bottom of the earth and that's your saltwater battery because it would have took probably even more than oceans worth of water to actually mine the whole earth i think the vast majority of the mining wastewater that was used to mine the earth is on the bottom of the earth itself Okay. Could be. Yeah, it's hard to know. It's just, just kind of. So it has hexagon structure, right? Yeah. I mean, that's in the movie. Is it really like that? I don't know. Uh, can you take quartz and grind it all up and then glue it all back together in a in a solid piece? It could be something like that. Uh, but yeah. the hex, but the idea of the uh, six-sided hexagon there, I mean, that sounds reasonable to me. And, uh, you know, right there, that's an, just a, you know, basic little example of how a salt water battery could be set up. It's just basically water and salt. Now, what type of salt it has to contain? Any uh, type of salt? I don't, I don't know, Philip. I guess I've never got that specific to, to look at it, that particular issue, so I don't know. Or just equal to electrolyte type of salt, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. 
Okay. I'm not sure. I said so. I said say. I suggest you take a look at it because uh, you know in in the mining areas like the the ex mining quarries they get filled with water, and somebody's you know has this you know job to measure all these metals and solutions in the water just to see how clean it is is it fresh or is it salty or whatever so i mean each and every lake that we have could be an an ex mining quarry right so and uh, different lakes have different compounds of salts and you know freshness yeah. percentage right yeah i would suggest all lakes are quarries uh some of them are uh, 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 uh fresh water and, and you know some are yeah, Salt some are like yeah. some are like blue color water, some like little bit green color water, some are like totally coffee type of water. I mean, yeah. you cannot see anything. And we have like different, like four types of different lakes in in one square, two square miles in in one area. I mean, oh, yeah? I was there. And you can jump from one to another in like a day. You do this trip, and that is like uh, <laughs> folks call it a way to heal yourself. I mean. <laughs> let's see here and of course they you know like i said they love to tell us stuff they love to show us the truth mock us basically and, you know that's the rose center for earth and space and uh i think that's in new york city i think um and then the epcot uh, center in uh, walt disney uh so they like to tell us stuff so that's what I think they're doing there. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this guy's uh, uh, bottle garden here. Yeah. Uh, the basic story here is this gentleman uh, set this thing up, uh, and he watered it once. And then I think within a short period of time afterwards, he like a, days or weeks later, he adjusted the water level a little bit right, to get it just right. Put the cap on it, and for like 40 years, that's been growing like that. Because it's a system. You, you can live inside of a system if you have the right things in there because, you know, the plants create the oxygen and blah, blah, blah. And you get, a, you get an ecosystem that, that, that grows in there, and it's, it's self-sustaining. And that's how we live inside of a glass ball. Yeah, a bunch of flat earth researchers, uh, you know, told told the same information that you are just showing about this closed system and uh, I, I totally agree with the closed system closed system has ideal gas in it and uh, that can explain that some certain areas have like freezing temperatures because ideal gas works this way I mean they call it ideal because they assume the system is closed yeah I mean, we, you know, we know we live in a closed system because we have barometric pressure uh, on Earth. I mean, we, we could possibly have barometric, barometric pressure if we were not inside a container. Um, the vacuum of space is allegedly the most powerful vacuum there is by a, by a million times greater. And there's no way that the atmosphere of the Earth could border a giant vacuum without the atmosphere being sucked off. So we have to live inside of a container. There's just no other choice. If there is outside pressure, I mean, we just assume there is some outside pressure. But if there is no outside pressure, something can be explained a little bit different. Because uh, well, we don't know, actually what type of pressure because pressure can be negative it can be positive i mean the vacuum is a negative pressure yeah right? yeah it would suck us off the planet if if the yeah. official story of the earth was real but we see the the vacuum uh tests and vacuum practices with you know uh, railway uh you know this huge transportation logistic railway have you seen them under vacuum they like totally squeezed Oh yeah, I've seen. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that. Just boom. <laughs> yeah, because this can happen, and this is uh, tested and it's repeatable. So I mean, how can they explain this outside vacuum without any type of barrier? Yeah. So, well, they can't, and that's that's why we know it's all fake. 
Yeah, I think that your 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 layer system uh, that you just you know explained us, and the submarine comparison is very decent because submarine consists of different layers of uh, you know different materials. So I mean, yeah. you should also take a look at it. It's kind of closed information because you know it's. Uh, Sometimes it's top secret information. You don't know actually how the all these uh, modern submarines are actually done, but you can take a look at old ones, how they actually constructed them in the beginning of nineteenth, uh, in, in the beginning of twentieth century. Very interesting information, I think. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, I did do a little bit of research on the submarines, and that's kind of how I come up with this. And there was a song. We we all live in a yellow submarine, also. Yeah, I think I got that picture coming up. <laughs> uh, I think that's about that jar. And, you know, of course, they love to tell us stuff. So this is just some ledge drawing from 1876 of the world. And it's got two shells. And I think why they like elephants is because elephants like to squirt water out of their trunks, right? That's That represents hydraulic mining. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Because we all live in a yellow submarine. <laughs> uh, oh, this is really interesting. Have you ever seen that Hennessy commercial? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. About Jacques... Uh, Augustine Picard? Yeah, Picard. Yeah. You want me to show that? Not really, because we're going to be get banned for that. So, I mean, people Oh, we will? It. Yeah. Oh. Just, what? you know, you can, you, you can show exact frame and explain what what is happening on the screen but you 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 you, you don't play uh you don't push the play button right well uh, then i i just want just scro sc scroll scroll it with the scroller oh okay, okay all right so in this commercial he he goes up in a balloon and there's his balloon right there and he's getting up there and you can see the dome up there and then he crashes through that glass wall then the next scene coming up here okay i guess he's going through there now and then he goes into water so there's he so the balloon went through the quartz dome and into the water that's between the steel outer shell and the quartz dome okay at least that's my interpretation of it <laughs> yeah yeah i like it. All right, this little thing on the right here is a is a piezo electric motor, basically, and uh, so those little scheme, scheme of actually working piezoelectric motor, right? Um, what's that? That's a blueprint or a scheme. Of yes, that, actually. Yes, I I think I got a video actually of this coming up here in a second. Kind of looks like a typewriter. Okay. Well, a lot. Well, electricity is is is. And remember, if quartz, if you squeeze it, it creates electricity. And quartz, if you run electricity through it, it it, it vibrates or, or it oscillates. It expands and contracts. So when you push electricity through it, it expands. When you stop that electrical flow, it contracts. So imagine these little, all those little silver-looking uh, piano key things. One goes up, one goes down, next one goes up, next one goes down, and it kind of alternates. And, and if you if you got something sitting on top of it, it'll spin it around in a circle. And this little motor is where I got the idea of how we could spin the sky if the bottom half of the, of the shell is, uh, you know, you could put these piezo uh, pieces along that and then put your glass dome on it and it would spin the stars around in the sky. Uh, there's this artist out there, Arnaldo Pomodoro, I guess. He, he makes all these weird sphere-like things. Mm -hmm. And I saw these along these pictures a long time ago, and I didn't know what they were. I just knew somehow those things were going to be important. So I saved a bunch of them, and then. Once I got onto this whole piezo idea, I, I remember back to these these this guy's art, and I'm thinking, those are piezoelectric actuators that he's showing us, and he's telling us that that's what's inside the Earth, and that's what makes it all work. 
Yeah, he's showing it. Exactly. Yeah. Now, yeah. my guess... Let, no, go ahead. Let, let, let's just... Uh, uh, remember, I was also posting about uh, the sun. Uh, this is also artwork by Russian sculptor Tseretelli. It's located in, in Moscow. Uh, let's sh let me show it to you. Um, can you see it? Oh yeah, yeah, that's the same guy, I think. No, that's not the same guy. It's Russian. Oh, it's He's not? Russian. He's Russian. Yeah. Oh, that's there's it. there's more than one guy making these things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. I just kind of assumed it, those were all the it, same it, guys. It, it looks like this one, right? Uh, but it's like this one. So I mean, oh yeah, I'm I, was, sh I, I was there. I was looking at it, and I was can figure out what what is these things. And these are all actually piezoelectric systems. That's what they look like. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of will show you some of those things too. I I thought that was the same guy. I didn't realize there was other guys doing that. No, no, no. that's di different person. Ah, very interesting. Okay, All right, we see, see your screen again. Let's see. Let's find this. Let's find this video of this. Oh, I think this is it here. I thought I'd make a quick video about something interesting I just came across. Uh, this will be a freebie video for my Patreon subscribers, and this is a piezoelectric motor. So let me show you how it works. This is just a plain piece of small glassware, and I'm going to put it on top of the motor and press the button. You can see it spins around. If I take the glassware away and press the button, nothing happens. So it's not like this is spinning, at least not macroscopically. But if you put a hard object, especially like glass on here, uh, it spins it around, no problem. Pretty cool piece of tech. And so as you can see, this is PCBmotor.com. And what's happening here is each one of the little elements in this ring is a piezoelectric uh, surface mount component. And if you uh, create a, a wave that travels around this ring of components. As the wave travels around, the components contract and expand, and it creates like little fingers that push the object around. So as long as it's in mechanical contact with the object that you want to spin, it's literally just like having fingers push around the object like this. The efficiency is not quite as good as it. Right? Yeah, good one. Good one. Yeah, so that's how. That's how you could spin the sky in a circle. Now, in this this idea with quartz and piezoelectricity is that if you design the pieces of quartz just right and you apply the electricity just right and you get it and you get it working at thirty two thousand seven hundred and sixty eight, it's going to keep perfect time. That is why we have perfect precision in the way that the, the sky yeah. operates is because yeah. it's quartz. And it could be measured in seconds. Seconds are also the measure system, which is on Earth, was, you know, also used with quartz, right? <laughs> so, I mean, all these clocks and stuff. Yeah. So it just makes perfect sense to me that uh, uh, piezoelectric would explain... What, what, what we see, kind of how it all might work. It just makes uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. This is something I threw together. It's like, uh, you know, are there other other Earths, other Earth-like structures? You know, where are they all at? Could they be arranged like something like this? Is there a structure called Mercury? Is there a structure called Venus, right? And instead of being in space flying around the sun, they're setting in water right by us. And that's what it re really is. I think. <laughs> why not? Why not? Because we've been talking about tunnel system on the Earth. So why don't we have the tunnel system outside of the Earth? Yeah. I mean, the stuff that they mine here. Uh, they, they, they have to, to get them somewhere. It has to go somewhere. So, if the if you know if the if if the universe was water, um, wh why would anybody build anything far away from each other? Wouldn't wouldn't uh, wouldn't everybody just kind of build everything pretty close to each other? Why would you want to travel 
a long distance to go anywhere. Yeah, right? my, research, my research also shows that all, all this, you know, information goes in to the logistics system and routes and all these earth politics actually was based on logistics and uh, naval interaction. So, I mean, the Navy itself is a key of possession of this place, right? So if you have huge Navy, if you have a bunch of ships, a bunch of trading system, like right now China is leading exporter of stuff and he has like a bunch of uh, trading uh, fleet, right? Like this mm -hmm. ever green, ever given that was stuck in Suez Channel and everything was closed yeah. for, for, for two weeks. I mean, uh, all those prices skyrocketed and stuff like yeah, this. How and convenient. Ch chip production, uh, ch this microchip production in China and Taiwan was stuck, all this stuff. So it, it's, it's all connected to logistics. And if you control logistics, you can control the place. So, and there yep. was uh, also huge information from Lady Mutt, which was, you know, she was working on what I was saying about logistics and, you know, Navy because in in Russian mythology all this outside world was called Navi world so navigate uh, I mean you yeah. have this response so this this is not like you know something from outside it's from inside and they call it Navi Navi mm. is a place and she was also uh, collaborating with me on that and she made a short video maybe I can you know later make a video on that too because i don't have enough enough yeah, time still so yeah, that she was talking about marine kingdom because everything on earth is related to um, you know marine law mar maritime law i mean we have bank notes we have currency we have watermarks and so on and so on and i mean you know shipmen everything is c connected to this stuff so yeah and there is a movie called Waterworld. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, and Flood Conspiracy, which is like in, in, in all these ancient myths, every, almost every nation remembers of some huge, great flood. Yeah. Yeah. Spa we can't live, you know, if you think about work and life, really come from could life really come from cold dead space or would life come from water life what? had life had to originate it from water and it just makes so much sense that that the world is water and life then created itself somehow i would suggest electrically probably in water and evolved or or, or somehow advanced in a, in a water world and then that advanced world begun to somehow build uh, things that allowed them to escape water like earths because you need earths to mine because you can't wine, mine water you got to have you got to have ground to mine uh, they made the ground to mine and they use electricity to to alter that ground in order to make metals and uh, one, uh, I don't know if I've ever talked about this before, since I kind of talked about it a little bit, is biomineralization. I don't know if any of you guys have heard about biomineralization. That's where uh, a, a, a biology can create its own minerals, like like seashells, for example. Yep, exactly. And, uh, yeah, and algae. And it's most likely that the, the, uh, the ingredients that... Uh, ultimately become the rocks that we have today were seashells were uh, bio minerals created by plants and things so the earliest earth m m most likely had uh, before they built the ground to mine had plant and animal life growing to create these minerals that were then ground up and used to make the original layers of the earth ground that were then electrically altered, you know, without other things they added to it, of course, it wouldn't just be the minerals from these, uh, uh, from plants and animals. And then, you know, they basically have their mining system where they create metals with all that material. And it's very possible that the water that we live in, there's, there's plants and seashells and things that live in that water. And that's the material that they use to make the ground. So in that case, the, the main uh, resource would be earth, 
right? The base resource. So uh, that's why it was so precious in the Waterworld movie when they were hunting the Earth. Remember? Yeah, yeah. The Earth. You got to have an Earth to have a place to live, a place to to mine. That's kind of where I where I've taken this, I guess. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what can we look at? Because you can grow stuff on Earth, like uh, trees, plants, and so on, like what you're saying. It's not only food, it's for further development. Because if you, ha you don't have this base, like Earth, like a part of Earth, and I don't know, you cannot grow plant on it, right? I'm not sure if I understood you there, Philip. I mean, I'm just, you know, remember what they're doing in that movie and trying to represent it. <laughs> oh. Being smart. Being smart. Well, let's see. Let's take a peek at this thing here. This is a, this is a piezo electric motor. And if you just use your imagination, you can see the earth in there. Uh, the green bottom part of the sphere is the bottom part of the earth. Uh, that's where you saw water batteries located. You got a flat plane that goes across the top. You got your PZO activators on the rim. Um, and you just spin that baby around. Now, how the how it's set up ultimately, you know, the pictures, you know, this model that I made here, I'm just kind of guessing. This is just my initial, you know, putting this idea together. It's possible that it, it, it's most likely, obviously, that, that it's slightly different than that. There's easily another. Uh, 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 the ground, you know, the uh, the bottom of the sphere that the actuator sit on could be actually another piece that's in there inside of uh, the quartz shell, and it just sits there. And uh, like if you were to take, you know, nesting bowls like from your kitchen, the mixing bowls that nest inside each other, and you take the biggest one and you and you put water in it, right? And then you yep. set the next smallest size, the next largest size inside of there, and it sits in there, right? And if you adjust the water and have it just right to where the bowl sits inside the other bowl and it's sitting in water and the water goes all the way up to the top on the sides, right? And then you can take that inside bowl and spin it in a circle and it'll spin for a long time. It'll just sit there and spin and spin and spin and spin and spin. And, spin. and uh, that could be what we set it. We're just setting it in, 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 in a water. Yeah, and, it has uh, it has low friction. Yes, very very low friction. I was shocked by how long I could spin a bowl of water. It must have been thirty minutes. It's it was still spinning, and and then if you got your PCO activators on top of the rim of that bowl, and then that's how you you can uh, spin the sky. And it's also possible that the ground that you know I'm not trying to suggest the ground spins because it, it it probably doesn't. Even though it could, it's hard to tell. Uh, is the ground, you know, because if it, if, if we're just itching along at, you know, very well, you slow. Have, well, you have to have some axis, like what you're saying, like the star spinning thing that we can observe. It has an axis of something. So yeah. It has to be fixed to something. So, yeah. I mean. Yeah. And I think that it's fixed at the rim and that's, you know, um, that's kind of how I think it works because I can't think of another way it could possibly work. Um, let's see here. They also say that in South Pole, uh, filming also have this axis of spinning. So that probably we might have like two axes or maybe reflection axes. Who knows how it's, you know, actually this, this dome could be a projection itself. So. Yeah, this, this part of the story, as far as like, what the earth is, how is it set up? I mean that's the most complicated piece of the whole story is is what the Earth is and maybe you is, have an LCD technology like a liquid crystal. Uh, very possible, technology. yeah. So this is you just can what, project any kind of picture, any kind of spinning. Anything, like yeah, this is just kind of my first step into trying to figure out what the Earth is. I'm sure I'm going to have to modify this model and. But I think I got some of the right ideas. I'm pretty pretty sure that piezoelectricity is what makes it all work because it just makes so much sense that since piezo can perfectly time a watch, I think it could perfectly time the sky, and that's how they know everything that's going to happen because it's a 
it's a perfect quartz timing system. Yeah, I think you're onto something, and uh, I think you should um, watch some, you know, YouTube battles between flat earthers and uh, globe earthers when they try to talk about this, you know, axis of spinning, because some ideas that you just presented could be representation of real thing. And uh, just fix a little bit of that information, maybe influence of that information can help you to, you know, uh, make a right decision and yeah. 100% correct. Yeah, I definitely need to do a lot more research. This whole topic's quite complicated. And, you know, I've been, for the last few years, been focusing on the landscapes of the Earth and, and all that stuff. And I really haven't uh, paid a lot of attention to space and the stars and the sun and all that stuff. So I'm just trying to figure it out a little bit at a time. Yeah, if it, if it is a construct, it has to be constructed somehow. And you have to you have to have a theory to explain yeah and I think that theory could be working yeah and an emerging emergent of this research can show you the more correct uh, definitions and explanations why not yeah well I hope people smarter than me people that know more about electricity and stuff that can take uh, what I'm doing here and figure out the, the more technical aspects of it. I don't know that I got the brain power for that, but <laughs> but I'm trying. Yeah, that's that's really good information anyway. I think everybody enjoys it. And uh, there is a link to Mike's Facebook group. It's really growing. I mean, from the last time we, we've talked with you, it like has like 9,000 followers right now. Yeah, I think we're up to like 9,500. Yeah. And, that, and that's when Facebook those kind of shut us down for like a, a week or so where I, you know, I was yeah. getting about 100 new people a day. And then suddenly for about a 10 day period, uh, I got zero yeah. people. And now we're we seem to be picking back up again. And I can't believe how fast it has grown. But are those all real people or not? I don't know. It's, just, well, it's, it's, it's pretty active group, I, I'd say, uh, but, you know, all the, all the rest of the Facebook group I know, they really low uh, activity rate there. And yeah. my, my personal group, Mathlot uh, Advanced Research, also very low activity. I mean, people just reposting some crappy information, advertising their own, you know, pages. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have it yet, so I think uh, your group is more valid than mine, so... I suggest everybody join that group and uh, the topic is very interesting I've been talking about it for three or more years I don't know and re recently uh, we see this expansion and emergence of this you know ancient mining theory up to the earth model as you can see so yeah we're, uh, uh, a way to go way to go <laughs> <laughs> thank you Philip I appreciate it. appreciate that yeah. and again here's another example of where they like to tell us stuff the other day, I, I'm watching TV and I see this local for the American Movie Channel. Okay. Uh, and I see that plus in there, and I'm going, "That's my model. That's the PZO Electric model." Isn't that AMC uh, production uh, Walking Dead uh, series? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. AMC is the Walking Dead people. Okay. Yeah. Right now we have with Walking Dead, by the way. Just check out what was happening in, in Afghanistan and what is happening right now. That's Walking Dead. Yeah. People are closed in, in certain areas and even shooting outside just to get rid of those people outside, you know. <laughs> Reset technology. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Where are we at now? Philip, uh, not only does the PTO electricity, you know, like somehow revolve you know spin the sky for us but it also produces uh, it also i think uh, uh controls the plumbing on earth um if you look into pco electric stuff you can find that being field ceramic technology to meet these precision requirements yeah, trodes each at produce and closing gas channels. These actuators provide yeah, ultra precise PZO gas flow control and mass flow controllers. Control plumbing. In addition, they are also used. And I think uh, that's also what the system does. It controls the the return of the water uh, to places for it to run back out again. If you think about 
you know, where does all the water go that soaks into the cornfields in Iowa every year, day after day? It's got to go somewhere, right? So does it all just collect in the bottom somewhere, or do they return it? And I think they use piezoelectricity to uh, return to water to certain mountains that, where it runs back out, or in certain places where glaciers are formed, that's where the water is being pumped back out. So the glaciers are kind of deposits of the water for the future purposes, right? Well, I think the glaciers are, well, not, not all glaciers now. I'm, I'm talking more about like the real big ones up north. Uh, um, I don't know if I've showed you pictures of those before. Maybe I could show you one here. Uh, that's where the water that the water's pumped back out that direction. And then it comes back up through pipes and then comes back out of places. And those are where the glaciers are formed. And then they melt this ice and make it run. And, you know, it's just, it's kind of like defrosting your refrigerator. Like at least yeah, old, yeah, yeah. old school refrigerators, you had to defrost them in the past uh, because the ice would build up. And I think that's kind of how they got to, they just pump the water around to keep the system working. Because water will build up like ice in a, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a freezer. Um, here you want to look at that there's your there's your art piece although I guess maybe this is from this other guy or maybe I got the people wrong I, I don't I don't know but what if the moon and the sun are one of these things yeah exactly exactly yeah now if you think about you know the the little video I showed you of the the glass spinning in a circle right the little glass test tube thing spinning in a circle. Imagine instead of spinning in a circle, it was a train track of these little square rectangles of quartz. And, and you had a, 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 a device, a big metal piece of something looking like uh, the, the disc there that you put on tracks and, those, and that thing moved on tracks. And imagine using electricity piezoelectricity you either illuminate that thing or light it up somehow or it's some kind of projector and it plays a movie as it's passing by you with the moon looking differently from day to day um, it's really hard to say I find the you know trying to figure out what the sun and the moon is and the stars to be the most difficult part of trying to figure out the, the secrets to the earth and uh, there are just a couple comparisons here for you to see. And I'm not saying that the moon is, is, is a disc that looks just like that. I'm just saying they love to tell us stuff in art. And this could be their idea of trying to show us subliminally what the moon really is. Oh, here's your, uh, okay, here's, now if you look at the, the glacier there in Alaska, and you look at the mountains around it, I mean, don't we have to ask ourselves, where does that snow come from? <laughs> right? Because it looks incredibly deep there. I don't see snow running down the banks of hills that are taller than that area, really, except for just a little bit. I I think water comes up there. They pump the water using piezoelectric plumbing system. They pump the water to that area. It is forced up. And it runs out. And I think that's how they do the uh, <clears throat> the fake volcano eruptions. Really, lava only flows in a few places in the world, Hawaii and Iceland. Uh, Hawaii, uh, most, most volcanoes everywhere don't, don't produce lava that looks that flows like that, only in a few places. So I think these places were set up to have material flow up and out of up and out of them. And it's very possible that they use a directed energy weapon in, in the dome to melt this ice or to heat this material that they then call lava. Okay. The, 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 the question of how water gets uh, in, in all those waterfall systems and stuff like in the mountains, a bunch of people were discussing about that. And, you know, some even thought about drilling technology and mining when you have this water 
like be, we have been talking about in the quarries the same type of water comes from underneath and uh, do the drilling and you can also do that and find the fresh water if you search for certain layer uh, on a certain depth you can find fresh water you mm -hmm. can find salt water and so on so i mean uh, if you need something on the top drill something find fresh water and it'll come up on the top because of these pressure from underneath okay and that that makes sense if you if you have this plane that is you know creating this pressure due to to its weight i mean all the positioning of that you know plane also can create pressure yeah 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 it's it's hard to, to figure it out because we don't have that access to things to be able to go and look at this stuff so we can only kind of guess but um but yeah there there's definitely some kind of a plumbing system otherwise all the water would end up being in the ground after a while <laughs> you think uh here, let's just take a quick look at this uh, this is some cosmology map from a from allegedly 1825 and it just kind of goes along with my idea and uh for what it's worth uh, let's see you know it's just like the moon imagine another kind of thing like uh, uh, that represents the sun another one and somehow they uh, they light it up and it moves along tracks in the sky now does it run along the inside of the dome I don't, I don't really know and I don't know for sure that I'm right about the sun and the moon I'm just like I said these are just my initial investigations into this trying to come up with ideas and I, and I could be uh, I could be totally wrong but that stuff sure does look like PZO actu actuators to me <laughs> yeah and that is commercial actual commercial uh, with the sun replacement yeah I don't probably I guess you probably don't want me to show that commercial either yeah. or we get in trouble but in this commercial the sun starts flickering and these workmen they go out and uh, they get a big box and they uh, pull this sun out and they replace the sun. And when they're and, when, and in this commercial, they plug the sun into a, an outlet. And so what they're telling us in this commercial is that the sun does not produce electricity. The sun needs electricity to run. But it could just be a commercial and that's all nothing to do with it but i don't believe in coincidences i think they're basically telling us that the sun needs power because the sun doesn't generate power the sun is powered by pzo electricity and that's kind of sort of what i've put together so far philip about yeah yeah okay uh, how the earth could could operate i'm going to obviously put a lot more work into this and and try to continue to see what i might could figure out yeah thanks a lot everybody uh who joined us today sorry didn't read any comments but uh we sure were uh, fast enough to describe what mike was trying to talk about in his piezoelectric model I think it's kind of plausible or even more has to be existing that's why i wanted to bring up this information so maybe somebody will hear it from flat earth society and invite mike talk with with him uh, on his ideas maybe you can collaborate because i'm not actually doing anything on flat earth right now and i'm having enough uh, of my own subjects of research right yeah but i think ancient mining is obviously uh, real you can see this evidence everywhere so why not we discuss this new level of information and bring more people bring new minds to this discussion I think that would be good yeah we need some people that have some expertise in electricity and piezo electricity to take these ideas and kind of make it make sense because I don't have the technical background to 
to kind of figure this stuff out. <laughs> I'm gonna hope some other somebody uh, picks up the reins and runs with what I what I got started and can kind of maybe make more sense of it. Because I would have to spend every day for a year just teaching myself about piezoelectricity because it's quite complicated. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, everybody, and uh, see you later, guys. All right, Phil. Thank you, buddy. Always nice talk chatting with you, bud. Talk at you later. Yeah, see you, bye.